Welcome everybody to our feedback session for Water Under the Bridge. Today we're here with me, Carola, and Kaiju. So we would like to give you some ideas on what we've picked up in the responses from all of you, from all the learners. It's fascinating to see your pictures, for example, this one on the Guatapuri River in Colombia, where you see the close interconnection between people on land and, and people on the sea. And also in this case of India, the spring, which is built in a way, or is, is captured by these stones in a way so that you have the, the human height at one point and it, it descends down almost at the height of the hands. So I would be really curious to learn more about how this spring is used um, and what the historic practices have been around this particular site. We have also received a few more mental maps and I've just picked up this one from St. Andrews in, in New Brunswick. So I've been fascinated by the use of the term maritime culture here. So I'm still looking for a way to best define it and to capture it. And the other note that has really struck me is this idea of a free resource and free in quotation marks. Now, I think that captures, captures very well our probably misled use of water, which is being thought about as being available everywhere, free uh, and yeah, free for everyone and without any implications, which is exactly what we are trying to um, get away from. And that is also then nicely linked to the concepts here of heritage, which is crossed by the highway. So even looking at these mental maps, however they are drawn can teach us a lot about we, how we engage with water, what its role is for, as you see here, tourism, employment, garbage, recreation, uh, and many more. Now in the discussion, you've made us aware of a number of global case studies, and we'd like to pick up a few more uh, that you have been discussing. So please do add your own case studies here and engage with each other. One of the cases we found particularly intriguing is the Salinas de uh, Santa Pola. Uh, Kayi, you had also a couple of thoughts on this one. Yeah, we found it, we found it interesting that there is a blurred boundaries between regional case and a global case because of the mentioned uh, salt trade in this area. Uh, for the local people, people always think it is an uh, inhabited island. It's a natural park, but if we consider the salt trade in this area as a, a source, as a material, we can find this small region actually has reached far away to Africa and Japan in Asia. Exactly. So what seems to be a local water resource is often embedded in global commodity flows. Another example is the, is the one of the Kunz in, uh, in Matura. Kai, you had some thoughts on this. Yeah, and because we found that we can see this kind of cone structure everywhere because water is necessary and important for anyone, for our human beings. But so this kind of uh, cone structure appear in rural area, suburban area and urban areas in India from the history. Uh, to nowadays, but we can see that the water bodies that people uh, established to contain it is uh, are very exactly, and I mean that's also what we've tried to highlight throughout the course that water is needed and used at all kinds of scales in cities, in suburbia, in agricultural areas. We need it everywhere. It's connected throughout. But the way it's being used and cared for varies from one side to the other. So we need this awareness about this interconnection of the water system and its, its, its various expressions. Now, the timelines that we've been seeing or the changes over time are, I think, particularly well captured in the, these images from St. Andrews where on the left, we see a historic image of landing fish where people are right at the edge of the water, where the boats come up to the, to the shore, to the shore or to the quay. Uh, and there's lots of back and forth and activity in this very small area. 
today these, this wharf keeps on changing. There are still fishing boats there, but the activities have changed quite a bit and are not, perhaps not as intense, not as linked to specific times as they used to be in the past. There are clearly, as our learner showed us, activities to think about wharf replacement. So taking into account even climate change. So how high does all this have to be lifted up to protect against uh, projected sea level rise? I'm really wondering what this means for the existing cities uh, or the existing town next to it in terms of how are we going to lift up the houses for what, five, six, seven meters? It, it's not a new story. Actually, in many places around the world, we have seen entire districts being rebuilt at a higher, uh, at a higher level. Uh, in the case of Hamburg, where I'm from, one of the districts near the, near the, um, near the water was built up about seven meters and changed from a historic housing district to the um, uh, office building district that you see today. So it would be interesting to see how other places around the world imagine the future. This is another one that we found particularly fascinating from Valparaiso, where we see underground, or what is today particularly underground water. So where water coming down from the hills was originally part of a whole urban landscape with promenades, with uh, bridges with trees and actually adding to the quality of life. Over time, the same structure had to make way or people decided to take it out in order to make way for cars, uh, putting the water underground. And the contemporary images then shows no trees, no water, and a place mainly for, ca uh, for cars and itinerant fares, as the learner um, tells us. Similar examples can be seen also in the case of Bergen, uh, where the learner showed us here the pipelines coming down from the mountains with the problem that the pipelines are apparently no longer quite at the right scale, uh, maybe also a fact of uh, climate change, and which means that the, that the water sometimes mixes up with the sewage water, creating all kinds of environmental problems, particularly for the fjords. So this is just to say that the complexity of water system and sea level change can happen on all kinds of level. We can talk about rivers, we can talk about seas, we talk about rainwater. So we are very curious to see how the historic situations in your place have evolved over time and what contemporary challenges mean for these locations. So we look forward to seeing you again next week um, and to talk about the next implications and the next stages of Waterworks. Thanks and goodbye. Bye-bye.